throws a few wide punches. Slightly better round for Romero in round number four. Landed eight of 21 power shots, trying to make his physical presence felt in the fight. Jesse Reed, the trainer, tried to uh, inspire Tapia by telling him the story of a very intense rivalry he was associated with. And two fighters had the same girlfriend. He said, and the fighter who was under control won the fight. Who got the girl? <laughs> that was Bruce Curry against Monroe Brooks in Fort Worth many years ago. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through the first four? Jim, let me tell you, I think Johnny Tappy is controlling his fight. I think he's winning on ring generalship. He's getting off first. Those moves to the side are killing Romero. He's digging that left hook to the body constantly. I think he's got Danny out of his rhythm. I think this is all Johnny Tapia. I think he's doing an absolutely great job and real, real good hand speed. And as you spoke, Harold, Danny Romero trying to turn it around, twisted Tapia's head aside with a hard right hand shot, one of his most effective punches so far. And I really think the opposite because uh, uh, Tapia is doing a lot of playing around, dropping his hand, smiling. A fighter will do these things sometimes because something is wrong somewhere. I scored the first round even in the other rounds for Tapia. Tapia landing a counter right hand and a right hand up and under. Romero stepping in closer, making himself a little bit more available as a target, trying to land his own power shots, but giving Tapia the chance to counter. These are Romero's best moments the last 30 seconds. You saw him bob up out of that crouch and land the right hand. Now Tapia goes backward to get away from another looping right. Tapia comes back to the body, lands low. Alfred didn't see it. Romero Corner told him not to sling that right hand over. Try to make it come straight down the mid in the middle there. Good right hand by Romero. And the good thing about Romero, once he lands that right hand, he steps completely over to the left hand of uh, uh, Tapia, so he's out of uh, range for a counter right hand. But those right hands have shaken lesser men than Johnny Tapia. Tapia is taking those punches well. Doesn't want to take too many of them, but he has taken them well. Solid left uppercut inside by Johnny Tapia as he steps back into the business. Romero right. stepping away from Tapia's right hand, but making himself available to Tapia's counter left to the body, and now Romero lands low, and Halpern does see that one, and Tapia goes back to the left hook to the body. And for the first time this round, we've seen Tapia's back hit those ropes. First time. Yep. Back to the ropes, which is a good, interesting change. Solid right hand by Romero, countering inside to punctuate his best round of the fight. Round five. Real sports. And Romero went back to his corner with a little grin on his face as though he had discovered something. Let's see if he can perpetuate it in this round, whatever it is. Slight swelling around the outside of the left eye of Danny Romero. That's the eye that was fractured in his fight with Willie Salazar. Let's see if it amounts to anything. You see Harold Letterman's scorecard through six. With Tapia still in command, but Harold gave the fifth to Romero. I have it three one and one at this point. blocking those thrusts by Tapia. Good counter right hand again by Romero. He's found something with that counter right hand, George. Yeah, and it's going home every time. But he had to step in closer to make it work. He finally did that in the yeah. fourth and fifth. And he's found out, too, he's, he doesn't have to have the power on it that he had in the first couple of rounds. Take the power out, you get the connection. Do it real quick. The head movement and foot movement ballet there. The two fighters showing you their skills and command of the ring. Tapia going back to the left hook. Romero not giving him a chance to land as he holds his fire for the moment. Romero went back to the jab to the body like his corner told him. This is the first jab to the body he tried. Now he's going to the body. Things change quickly when she starts those combinations to the body. Romero is doing good now. Right and left to the body by Romero in combination. Tapia trying to come back, hoping to reestablish his jab. Romero out, 
jabbing him for the moment. Tapia going into a little bit of a drop of inactivity here, and Danny Romero getting a chance to command. And, you, and with those young or faster guys, you don't want to get behind and start trying to catch them with left jabs. And that's what Tapia's having to do now. Most of the time, you're going to miss. So momentum seeming to shift subtly in the bout now. Early rounds appeared to belong to Tapia. Romero landing more and more power shots like that and gaining the favor of more and more of the crowd. Romero blocking those shots by Tapia. Johnny hadn't been able to do much here in round six. Left hook upstairs. Romero is trying his best to make Tapia get on those ropes. Show some frustration. That's where he doesn't want to be. Make him touch it. And he's hitting him with left hook for the first time this round. Another left hook that backs him up. You the to... Romero partisans in the crowd begin to scream and cheer, as did the Tapia crowd earlier. And that's, that's the mark of a good fighter. You have something in your bag that the guy hasn't seen all night. He hasn't seen that left hook by Romero. Well, we saw Romero when he won the title, uh, George, be able to change his strategy in mid-fight, which was amazing for a 20-year-old at that time. So he's got a lot of resources. Boy, what up a hand, up, right up a cup by Romero. That was a Ooh. tremendous round for Danny Romero. Back into the fight that round. Don't let him back into the fight. Don't take your hurt. Put your jump. All right, don't bullshit with him at all. We just start snapping him. Snap your punches and beat him with your speed. Okay. Your hands got to get it. He's starting to pot shot you. Listen, Eddie. Listen, Eddie. Water, hit some of them up. That's George Jam. Go to and double it up. When you get inside, throw your double left hook. Power with power, JT. When, when, when you get inside, you got both hands up. That throw your double left hook and then you go to the body with your right hand. Don't get hit with that right hand. Don't stop in front of him, huh? Because he'll let him throw punches. Okay? How you feel? Good. Work your way in. Okay. okay. Here we Any see shot? Romero as he works his way in with a straight right hand, and Tapia was backing up for much of the rest of the round. And in the corners between rounds, as you heard, at least three different voices in Johnny Tapia's corner. There is always only one voice when Danny Romero sits and listens. Romero more than double Tapia on power shots in the sixth, and he starts the sixth with a right hand. Yeah. Love hit the canvas, but Halpern's not going to rule it a knockdown. He warns him not to put his gloves on the canvas when he clowns. He could have ruled that a knockdown. Believe me. In a way, it was a knockdown because that punch hurt Tapia. And he faked, played around and touched his hand to the glove. Harold, do you think that was a legal knockdown? Jim, let me, let me tell you something. He could have called it a knockdown, you were right. But it was obvious that Johnny Tapia was clowning. And Mitch Halpern, being the good referee he was, just warned him and said, quit fooling around. He didn't go down on the end of a punch. It's true that he touched it with the canvas, but... That's good. A reasonable call by Halpern. And Danny Romero establishing power shots again in the first minute of round seven. So Tapia goes back to trying to counter. Tapia was fighting a much better fight when he was counterpunching, not using too much of the ring. Now he's starting to use a lot of the ring, trying to be the aggressor, and he's being caught. As his corner told him, he's pot-shotting you. <laughs> As Romero lands more, Tapia throws less. That was the pattern in the last round. Now Tapia finally gets to Romero's body with the right hand and hopes that that can help him reestablish momentum. You heard Eddie Futch telling Tapia, go back to the jab, double jab, and then double hook. And that stiff jab that he has is, being, is really effective. Come back, come back, come back. You're, you okay? Headbutt. You okay? Accidental headbutt. Headbutt. You all right? You guys all right? Let's go, come on. Well, you, you heard what Tapia said. You are right, Danny. I think they're beginning to develop a greater respect for one another, that's for sure. Well, there's no greater respect than two fighters who've been in giving their best shots at each other. Crowd tries to lift Tapia. Well, Tapia's starting to reach with a lot of shots. And that's a, what you don't want to have as a guy that's been established himself as a power puncher in the fight. Don't start reaching. That left hook hurt. Keep it up, keep it up. Evan Flow 
shifting tides of fortune in Las Vegas. Early part of the fight belonged to Tapia. Romero has established himself in the middle rounds. Johnny Tapia trying to come back against that now. And Romero goes right back with that left jab in the mid middle of the stomach. That hurts when it happens to you in the sixth and seventh round of a boxing match. And he's able to come back up with a stiff jab because of that. Romero out throwing and out landing Tapia during this portion of the fight. Johnny beginning to build momentum in the second half of this round as he tries to seize back the initiative that he had early. Hard right hand inside. 